Aston Villa 3, West Bromwich Albion 0. Aston Villa come back to the West Midlands derby and secure three points and produce us to move up to ninth. And overall, I thought it was a near flawless performance. I think, um, as I said in our predictions video, I think simply our quality would just outshine West Brom. And I think it really did for over the 90 minutes. Um, West Brom only having one attempt um, to make anything at goal. Um, and really giving Martinez nothing to do. But, uh, but really, it was just 90 minutes of Aston Villa dominating the game. Um, and overall, we got the result that we wanted out of it. I mean, the only negative that we could have took from it is that perhaps we didn't score more and take our chances as much. Um, and I thought it was a really good performance by nearly everyone on the pitch. I thought apart from um, before he scored his goal, I thought Troy Orris had a really poor game again just because, although he did get the assist, I think really, again, it's just the one-footedness. He's just... For me, when it comes to the pl the play, just slows down so much because he's only got the one foot. Uh, he's very predictable to read again because of his one foot. So you know he's either going to over try and cross it into the left hand side, he's going to try and cut across into still keep on his left because he's only got the one foot. Um, but I think after he got his goal, major he turned it around, and I thought it was a really good performance from him. Um, it was a really nice start, obviously from Villa. You know, getting that early goal five minutes in um, from Bertrand Troy, really nice to give El guys the goal, boost his confidence even more. Um, and really show why he's really good in it, especially against playing against West Bromwich Albion. Um, obviously, we get the red card, which was a red card, let's be honest, it really was, you know. Um, oh, what was his name? Um, uh, uh, Livermore. You know, he's not really going for the ball, he's lost it, and he's, he's literally jumped into Jack Grealish, and he's trying to cause a foul out of Spy from losing the ball. So I thought it was obviously a red card there. And I think... Although it did look a bit shaky at times, it didn't feel like we were going to get that goal. And if um, West Brom just had one chance to put it away, we're going to end up walking out on a draw. Um, but obviously, we did get uh, what we thought was a goal for a great bit of play with Bertrand Traore to Matty Cash to Ollie Watkins. Ollie Watkins to get a goal, but unfortunately, got ruled out for VAR, uh, which was a little bit disappointing. But, you know, that's the way of the world. Um, and then obviously, Villa come back into it. You know, Bertrand Troy with that cheeky little finish. Um, into the right bottom corner uh, and really turning on the switch and perhaps showing maybe he is a bit more valuable to this team. Uh, but I just, I just want to see him work a bit more in his right foot. It's not being so predictable and just being so a bit one-legged. Um, and then we get the penalty a few minutes later and El Gaz is able to put that away um, and really stamp his right place in the first team for now until um, perhaps January if we do invest in another winger. Um, but overall, Villa cruise through the game, nothing really to bother any Martinez on the back line, and really overall, just be a near flawless performance. I think player wise, everyone did their jobs perfectly. I think defensively, we were great. I thought Tiger was a little bit shaky on the right, um, but I thought he grew into it. I thought Mike Cash did really well coming back into the game. Um, I thought in midfield, I thought Douglas Weed was a really nice addition again. He showed, um, you know, although he was playing with McCann the last week, um, not that much creativity. I thought coming back into and having took us a wheeze, it made we have that solid foundation a bit more freedom going up the pitch. I thought again Jack Bridge had a really good game. Um, I thought uh, Bertrand Troy, I think, really did improve. As I said with the goal, I did think he wasn't um you know coming perhaps up to par um with the game as perhaps everyone else, but I think after the goal and over time we've all started to grow a little bit in confidence and I thought ultimately it was a decent performance for him, probably his best since joining. Um I just feel bad for Ollie Watkins, you know, because he's not really getting the goals, he's not really getting as much service as he likes. Um, and I just like to think that his confidence or his attitude is not going to be destroyed because he's getting um, the goals that he's not being rewarded with. Because he's a good player, he's making the right decisions. And considering what we had with Wesley that season, it's much definitely an upgrade. It's just the case of when Wesley comes back in, he's worth starting in for his hold up play and perhaps seeing what the link up can be between the two of them. Um, so, yeah, I don't want him to feel bad because I do believe in him. I still think he is the right choice for us. I just hope his attitude or perhaps um, his feelings towards not getting a goal is going to get destroyed at all. And I thought El Ghazi was perhaps the second best player on the pitch today, as um, as mad as it seems. Although he was a bit sloppy here and there, I think the two goals and overall just that of confidence playing with him, um, it was just really nice to see him play compared to what we were seeing last season when we thought he was the worst player on the pitch. Um, and obviously Jack Reed should be a man of the match ran the show was the only one really creating wasn't he um, and it was just really nice to see us come back from Burnley where we should have got three points to actually capitalise on um, you know, our poor West Brom team gain some confidence and fall here so we can go into Crystal Palace 
um, in the next game now or whoever we're playing next. Um, but anyway, go into the next game now, have that bit of confidence, be able to say, you know what, we're going to get three points before we move on to those bigger games like Chelsea, like your Man United and look into the New Year games. Um, and really that's much all to talk about. West Brom didn't really do anything for us, really didn't put any pressure on us. The only thing else I would like to talk about is substitutes. Obviously, we went the whole nine minutes without making one. And I just think really it's a bit poor. Although Troy already had the goal, I still think we should take him off and brought on Davis. Allowed him to have some minutes, perhaps, for on Jacob Ramsey. Even though put on um, uh, Gilbert or Mohamedi and push Cash forward. Uh, Ringo Taylor, you know, just freshen up the players. Make sure no one really um, ties themselves up and perhaps causes, um, perhaps not getting us a clean sheet. Um, giving us that much confidence. Just trying to you know, refresh the squad a little bit. But overall, it kind of makes sense because we will continuously in the ascendancy and overall really dominating the game. But... Pretty much that's really it. Just a really good performance for Aston Villa there. We move on to obviously the next game, which I will use Chris Powers or whatever. But we've got the confidence. We move into ninth place. Perhaps if we now get the win, we're going to go even higher. And I'd like to think that uh, we're going to enter the new year with a good, good place. That's my match reaction. Please do tune to our channel for more updates and more coverage on the West Brom game and other channels. But without further ado, I've been Ben of the Villa, the pride of Villa. See you later, boys.